Usually people think about quantum mechanics as something that applies to really small objects like a single atom or a, or a molecule, but quantum mechanics also sometimes applies to really big systems. And part of the excitement in quantum matter is that we're still at the early stages of understanding what are the ways in which quantum mechanics can uh, influence and be important for macroscopic properties of a, of a large quantum system. CTQM is the Center for Theory of Quantum Matter. It's a center that's part of the physics department here at University of Colorado Boulder and we have strong connections also to JILA and the National Institute of Standards and Technology. When I came to JILA, um, I was thinking about a June's optical lattice clock. This is one of the most precise clocks that we have now in the world. And it operates with a special type of atoms that is called alkaline, they're alkaline atoms. So we were trying to understand some mysterious collisions that they were seeing in the clock that were very bad for them because they deteriorate the precision of the clock. And then we found, we realized that these collisions had a very interesting symmetry that were not in other type of atoms that were, were typically used for quantum simulation or for in, in atomic physics. So we started to investigate and we resulted that this kind of a specific symmetry um, opened the path to uh, for connections um, in, or approximations that were previously done in condensed matter. They was just idealization. Imagine that this happens, then, then we can do that. But now in coal atoms, we didn't have to say, imagine that this happened, but this happened. Ana Maria is a leader in this, thinking about how gases of ultra-cold atoms can simulate phenomena in the solid state. And we started to explore this, and we realized that one of the implications this could have is that magnetic systems of these alkaline earth atoms could realize unusual types of quantum matter that so far have not been realized in any solid state materials. So this is where we, the synergy between anamo theories and condensed matter theories can give rise to a very exciting development. So after that, we, we realized, well, it was not only, then other people started to well, play an important role, Victor Gurari, and this is what we thought, oh, we, we, it's exciting, it's exciting to have this kind of connection synergy. And we thought, we need to get all these people together in the same room regularly so that we can talk to each other and learn from each other. And CTQM is a place for us to do that. All of us are talking, and we talk every week. Um, I, my research has been highly influenced because I learn about topics that could be interesting, for example, in high energy. So, and we are started to think about how we can bridge these ideas. There's sort of a common language that we all can use, and it makes it possible for us to work together. It's really nice. One thing that I find particularly exciting is the recent influx of ideas from quantum information theory into other parts of physics. I think the biggest growth directions for quantum information is making contributions to, to more traditional areas of physics. Um, I think it's also helping us to sort of understand quantum mechanics itself better and in um, more effective ways than, than we had uh, 20 years ago. The right time in someone's physics training to try to do interdisciplinary or cross-disciplinary work is, is early on, because that's when you have the time and the energy and the excitement to learn a lot of new, very different, sometimes very disparate things. And one of the things that CTQM does is provide an environment where it's possible for people to do that. My name is Oscar Hendrickson. I'm a PhD student at the University of Colorado in high energy physics. One of the tools that came out of string theory is holography. Uh, and this is a method that allows one to study these certain strongly interacting systems. And this has led me to collaborate with other people in CTQM, for example. This also lets me kind of get a feeling for how these people work in different fields, how they think, how they, how they feel about certain topics. Uh, and this makes it a lot easier to, if I myself want to branch into those other topics as well. 
the senior fellows here are all very good at what they do, but they're also very good at mentoring people. So I think that's not something that happens all the time. And I think the combination um, really helps um, sort of people like me. It gives me a role model in some sense, so I know what to do. And then it also helps um, students who are starting out to really um, understand how to do research and exposes them to a lot of um, great, great people. The idea is to try to learn from one another, collaborate with one another, share ideas, and hopefully do things that are really new and exciting as a result of that. 